49ers, Troy Aikman in the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Brady in the New England Patriots, three of the greatest sports franchise of all time, Juan and I are creating the fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sports Dynasty Podcast. All right. Our platforms are YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and probably others that I'm not aware of. For all of that, so like, comment, subscribe, and rate five stars, please. Yes. Thank you. It was a very interesting weekend, it was. Um, it was. Yeah, very interesting weekend. Off sports, on sports, it's, it was a great weekend. It was a good weekend. Some, well, most of it. Yeah, yeah, except for something that happened on Sunday night. But we'll get to that later. Um, yeah. yeah, in a different episode. Different episode. But um, week number 14. 14 was in the books. And a lot of interesting things have gone on there. We had a couple of uh, classics coming down. The, coming down, And, you know, let's, let's, let's go through it, guys. Before we go on to the good games, let's go and rapid fire on some of the trash ones that literally don't matter. For yeah. example, like the Redskins and Packers. No one really cares. Aaron Rodgers did, no, Aaron Rodgers, sorry, wrong Aaron. Aaron Jones did him. And Javius Geis is in the injury, you know, list for how many times now? The 17th time this year? Yeah. You know, like, that's, a, that's, I feel bad for people like that. But Redskins probably look for another running back. Uh, too. The, pa- the fact that the Packers let the Redskins hang around for these long is not good. Uh, uh, yeah, they got the ten and three. You know they're 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 leading the the, the tie with the tie with the, with the division right now, but um yeah that's no they up one yeah nine oh, yeah. and four yeah the yeah, Vikings. Because, yeah they're and they're I believe second seed now actually I don't think they're second seed I think they're third now yeah the Packers are second seed now wow that's a pretty soft one but hey maybe that'll move around a little while yeah whatever so yeah the, uh, the, the, another trash game Lions and Vikings it was never in <laughs> doubt that was a garbage time seven points whatever next. Uh, Panthers and Falcons. If you like seeing what Falcons should have looked like, that's what they should have looked like. But it took them a very long time to get there. Too late. Uh, this is the Panthers' first game without Ron Rivera, and yeah, they're just packing it up for the year. Basically. <clears throat> because yeah, this is bad. Basically, Bengals and Browns. Um, okay. The Bengals led this led this game thirteen to zero at at one point, and the Browns just had to come back and fight back, and you know. And um, you know, win the game. We'll get to this game more about this game later. It has nothing to do with this team at all whatsoever. But we'll get to oh, that. I'll about to say why I remember. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. get to that later. But uh, overall, um, uh, Baker Mayfield, you know, turned the ball twice. Nick Chubb was played very well, 106 yeah. yards. I think Mayfield got hurt for a minute. I think he sucked either way. Yeah, but um, Nick Chubb held it down because the yeah. Bengals suck. We didn't watch this game. We were too busy looking at the real games of the yeah. Home o'clock hours. So yeah, I just didn't even Who cares? Game. Next. Next, uh, Dolphins, Jets. Okay. First of all, the Dolphins. Even though the Jets won, a lot of Jet fans and, and, and the players themselves feel like they lost this game because they should have a phantom pass interference call that was overturned. And yeah, I never seen Brian Flores go pissed off. Yeah, the refs did a lot of good things this week. Oh yeah, the referees were absolutely incredible in this game in, in this week. So incredible that you know the NFL has to do something about it because this is god awful. Which I think they addressed. Yeah, cause they, cause it's it, sad that they have to address it, but it, they finally addressed it. Yeah, because it's bad. But yeah, the Jet, the Dolphins went up late. They scored all seven field goals and everything. You know, they were in position to win the game, but unfortunately, yeah, they had that kicker in fantasy. Good stuff. Yeah, guys. he did. Unfortunately, the Jets kicked the game winning field goal by Sam Ficken, and um, they won twenty two twenty one. They won four of their last five games. Who would have thought? Yeah, who cares? Next, uh, Chargers and Jaguars. Just a big giant beating. Cool. They Jaguars bench, suck. Yeah, they benched Nick Foles for Gardner Minshew, but it was like they just threw him to the fire. This team's packing it up for the year. Doug Marone about to be fired at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, he's done. I, I even indicate, I even advocated that. Listen, he should be fired because you know last year was injuries and everything. Blah blah blah. blah. They wanted to turn the page something else. And but yeah, what they, happened now? Yeah, they suck. Yeah, yeah all right they then. Suck. There you he, go. He should be fired. Goodbye. So maybe Jalen Ramsey had something going, but when you're we're right. talking about him, maybe you're right. But you know, all right. Steelers and Cardinals. Apparently, according to people, this was probably the worst game Kyler Murray has played by and far this year. He was um, he had, on a total for the year. He's been sacked forty six times for the whole year, 
which is um most in the league right now. Which and is, I feel like he caused like half of that. Yeah, but it's it's kind of like the Deshaun Watson type of type of play when he's trying to like move out of a clean pocket. But the only difference is the Cardinals' pocket is really bad, so you know they can never block for him anyway. But so he's under the rest most of the time. But he had three interceptions, most of them were forced. Um, the Steelers were in this game only because the Cardinals were that bad. Um, Duck Hodges was okay. Didn't have to do much. Didn't have to do much though. But no. you know. So they're very much alive in that wild card. Yeah, spot. eight and Six five. Eight. eight and five after starting the season one and four. Insane. Insane. All right, Titans and Raiders. Another gigantic ass whooping. It was really really close, but in the first three quarters they were doing well. But then Ryan Tannehill said, "Fuck this. This is ours. We're gonna take over the game." Yeah, and he they just did. turned super sane. And, and just went speaking crazy. of that, speaking of, we'll get to that in a second. The Titans just might win the AFC South. And a lot of people said I was crazy. I thought I was crazy. They played like trash with Marcus Mariota. In comes Ryan Tannehill, and they've won six of the last seven games. So, yeah, they're in striking distance doing this division. They got Houston the last two weeks, two of the last three weeks. So, we'll see about that. And the final trash game, I believe, yes. Giants and Eagles. Damn it, I'm so close. It was a good game. It was a good, 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 good Damn, game. Damn, I was so close. Eli Manning. I did pick Eagles to win this game, though. That's first, before I knew Eli was playing. Yeah, Eli Manning was um, played well the first half. They played well the first half. They were up 17-3 in the first half. Uh, second quarter, second half, The it, they literally, like, the Eagles obviously made adjustments to come back and everything. Um, Carson Wentz was okay. He was not that good. He made a lot of stupid throws. Like, like it was a play where he's about to get sacked, and he, he throws the ball. And it was blocked by Marcus Golden and was almost intercepted, but he dropped the interception, which would have put the Giants in field goal race to win the game. But unfortunately, they went downfield, tied, tied it up, and everything like that happens right there. Um, Pat Shermer is horrible. He, he's going to get fired. That's what everybody because said. Because they're saying that you're coaching scared. Like, you're coaching scared. Like, why? You're 2 and 10. Why aren't you, why aren't you more aggressive than you were in the first half? Um, yeah, so um, the Giants finally lose again. This defense is horrendous. And, yeah, the Eagles are now tied with the Cowboys at 6-7 and seven for the NFC East. Trash. Christ. Trash. Oh, I forgot one game. Colts and Buccaneers. Oh, yeah. Freaking Jameis. He might hit 30 and 30. He might. He just might. 30 in a session, 30 picks. Almost, he's, he's almost there. No half mercy. Like, I just don't get it. The Colts were up by at least 14 points in this game. And then, you know, Jameis. Famous Jameis. Came back and ended up winning the game 30 35. There's a good chance the Colts are might be out of it. They're 6 and 7. There's a good chance they're out of it. I already said that they're out of it last so week. So, his Colts are the out. Colts are done. Which I'm not surprised. Which they're. I'm not actually surprised either. I'm not surprised either. But. They may they may not finish last in the AFC South, but they'll finish they're finished third. Hell no, they're not. But because yeah, so Jaguars suck. I was on too far off, on too far off with them. They finished. They started five and two. Hey, they're only two games behind um, uh, Houston. So calm down. Not like they were trash, ass trash, or anything like that. No, they just had they, injuries. They, a lot of injuries, injuries just start and piling just up. Piled up, and then games they should have won, they lost. Okay. Anything else? I mean Cowboys and Bears, but I don't really, I don't want to talk about this because I don't like Cowboys. They suck. First of all, the score is very, very demeaning. Very, very not what it was. The Cowboys. It was inflated. They got destroyed. They got I know. destroyed. But you know the Cowboys with the garbage touchdown and everything. When you allow Mike Mitch Trubisky to rush for a forty yard touchdown run by himself, with no one touching him until he got to the end zone, literally nobody was near him to, to, to stop him. Yeah, you guys suck. Yeah, they do suck. But the lucky they play in a terrible AFC NFC East division. It sucks because the Bears are seven and six, literally one game better than you are, and there's a more chalky chance they're not gonna make the playoffs because they don't play in a shitty NFC East. But yeah. Oh well. Oh well, fuck them. Yep. Oh, and Broncos <laughs> Texans. The Bronco, I mean the Texans after winning their Super Bowl, winning their Super Bowl against the New England Patriots, you know, winning their big game against the New England Patriots. Drew, my guy, Drew Locke. You thought that he was good in the last game against the Chargers? 
You should have seen him in this one. He was busting ass, like killing, killing them. At one point, it was 38 to 3 at one point. You know, but, you know, they kind of put the foot the gas. It's like, you know, we got to lose the game. So they end up winning by 14 points. So, Mom, the Texans are now tied with the Titans for the AFC South. Yep. Uh, the Texans are fourth seed for now, and they play this Sunday for round one of two or three. I guess the Titans, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Seahawks and Rams. Yeah, Seahawks lead neck. Everybody thinks the Rams are back, but I'm not entirely sure no, about that. No, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure either. I just think the Seahawks had a bad game. Yeah, I think they laid an egg. So they were the number one. They were the they were they were the number one seed, but they were up there. They were like the number two or three seed. They yeah. were the second seed. And then they the come, Saints were number one. And then they laid an egg. And, and they, they lost, and then uh, San Francisco won, so we flipped back. Now Saints are third, being Bay second, San Francisco's first, and Seattle's fifth. Yes. So now the real games. Yep. Now the two. Yes, two real games. Literally, like, two of, of candidates of the best games of the year, actually. We're going to start. You want to start with offense or defense? Let's start with the defense first. All right, so that means you're starting with the Ravens and Bills. The Ravens defeated the Bills 24-17. to uh, Great game. First of all, it was the Bills, in my opinion, I really enjoy watching them in this game because they said they're not playing with people. They're saying, that listen... My only problem with the Bills in this game was that Josh Allen played well, but his receivers was not helping him out at all. Nope. A lot of drop passes. But like New England Patriots. Do I mean, a lot of drop passes. Cole Beasley had a beautiful 40-yard um, pass thrown to him. He dropped it, which, which, which would have put them in the red zone. And I think they would have scored and probably tied it to probably win the game. But, you know, but the defense played very well in this game. They did a lot. They did a really good job um, taking away – the running lanes for um, Lamar for Jackson. For MVP. For Lamar Jackson as much as he could. As much as he could. But, you know, the, you're going to do it so much. But yeah. uh, other than that, defensively, I kind of had no complaints And with they him. made him throw, and then he was kind of underwhelming. Um, Singletary hmm. was very well. Did play, play very well. You know, rushed the ball very well against this Ravens defense. It was, it was, it was good. It was really, well, really. It was a fantastic game. Fantastic I loved game it. by them. But far as the Ravens are concerned, I mean, re- they blitzed, what, like 99% of the time? They did. They did. It was like, okay, you know, pretty soon it's going to end up being able to counter that and whatever. But Lamar Jackson, your MVP, well, not your MVP, but the media's MVP, only threw for 145 yards. That's it. For three scores and an interception. That's it. That's it. I know. what I say? is underwhelming. He got three scores. Okay, how easy were those scores, though? One of them was like, what, a gigantic messed up coverage on a freaking slant to the tight end for like a 60-yard game? Yeah, yeah cute. Like, I can do that throw, too. Wide, wide open, too. He was wide open, too. Yeah, broken, like, busted coverage on a slant. Like, dude, I can make that throw, too. He's right there. Like, I don't see much difficulty on the scores he makes. Like, I haven't... You, there has not been one time where he's proven that he can step back in the pocket and actually play quarterback. Not one time. The one time I remember that happening... We actually been forced to throw was against Pittsburgh, and you see how shitty he looked in that game. That's all I'm saying. I don't hate the guy. I actually like the organization. I like what they're doing with him. I just don't like all of your hype. My finger is pointed at the microphone to you people. I don't like your hype. He does not deserve any of this hype. That's all I have to say about that. I didn't want to go on a rant part two. No rants today. That's, well, in, that's in the next episode. episode. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, I don't play well. It just this team is decent, him but that he, offense is still it's still very stagnant. It's at still times. a work in progress. Yeah, but Singletary running the ball, Singletary have no problem with that. They can keep going with it. Yeah, but uh, overall, they fall nine and four. They kind of they had a chance, you know, to keep pace with New. They still have pace with, up with New England for the division, but they kind of wanted to have ten wins and at least try to win. And instead of being tied, we tied with them, but you know, we'll get to that later. Um, the Ravens are eleven and two, so they clinch a playoff spot. More than likely, they'll clinch the division and probably the number one seed by next week. So yeah, next week it's okay. It is what it is. My thing is the Ravens. The last two weeks with the Forty Nine ers and the Bills. I don't know. I don't think the I don't think the Ravens want to see the Bills again. I don't think they want to see them again. But those are good teams they played. That's an excuse you could say. It's not like they look crap against trash. They played some two good view of the two of the top three defenses. They played in two back-to-back weeks, and they 
they didn't play all, all that well on offense, which is okay. It's fine. But what the problem with that is, that is who you're going to see in three weeks. Mm-hmm. You're going to see teams like that. So what are you going to do? Because to me, like the New England beating wasn't, it's not too credible because that was the first time you brought out that exotic playbook. You've never played like that beforehand. That was the first time. So no one knows what the hell to do against that. Now that the Bills had a whole month to prepare for that because there's a lot of tape, they came up with a game plan. You know, the one I said to do from the beginning, you know, make him throw. So with that said, now let's see if this happens again. Like maybe see, because they do play Pittsburgh. Let's see if Pittsburgh defense could do the same thing. So if this happens again, let's see if John Harbaugh and company can adjust to it. But they're still very strong. They're still the best team in the AFC. I don't think that's, that's a question now after what we've seen on Sunday. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it runs through them. So let's see how they deal with the pressure when the pressure goes to them. You know, when other, you know, Bills, if they had to see Bills again, if they got to play Kansas City again, you know, we'll see. Now, the final game we haven't went over yet. The so, offensive shootout of who, the year. Who would have thought? The 49ers defeated the Saints 48-46 to with a game-winning field goal kick by Robbie Gold. This was actually the most so much fun to watch, actually. It was, this was really freaking impressive, and I think 49ers put a fear of God into me. Yeah. This team is something else, dude. Like, I, I don't... I don't... Like, I don't want to say who's going to beat them, how is it possible to beat them, but it, they made me feel that way after that game because they went into the Superdome. And like I said last week when I was picking the Saints to win, they just came up of a freaking defensive slugfest against Baltimore the week before that. They are in the East Coast for two weeks when they're a West Coast team literally across the country. And then they went into the Superdome. One of the loudest indoor stadiums in the country. Yeah. And then they played against a, a they played against Breezes. Not just regular Drew Brees. They played like Breezes. When great. that Swarm Niners defense, who was second or first in the league, got shredded by him. And they won? If that's not impressive, I don't know what is. Like, honestly speaking. Drew, all of that. Drew Brees was absolutely sensational. Um, 349 with five touchdowns. Um, Michael Thomas, who's the best receiver in the NFL right now, or playing like he is right now, 11 catches, 11 catches, 134 yards, but score. Jared Cook was only two, 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 two catches, two touchdowns. Um, this was absolutely. He got knocked the f out. That's why he did. This he was so fun. And to watch. one, and that last touchdown pass shouldn't have counted, by the way. But whatever, more follies for the, you know, the refs. Yeah. Cause that ball was clearly out. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. The referees were. Amazing this weekend. Yeah, they were. They were, and they kind of screwed them, screwed the Saints too again. But I was you know, there was a call with um, who was it? This guy, the coach for the Saints, um, Sean Payton. Thought that they were gonna give him a call, and they ended up doing it. I'm like, come on, you knew they were gonna call that for you. You knew they were gonna call that for you, buddy. Like, why does Sean Payton continue to like argue with the referees? Like, yo. You know they're not gonna call it. Yeah, they're against this secret rebellion because of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, they're not. Cause I'm just convinced they're doing this on purpose. I'm for real, for real. How how many times? How many times this year they have done this? Yeah, yeah, they they're not messing with you. They're doing it on purpose. Like they're messing with the league on purpose. Like, oh, you want to question our authority? All right, so we're gonna do whatever the f we want, and whatever we say goes. Your replay can you can stick it up your ass. That's what they say to us. Cause well, this this week alone. Was horrible. Was ridiculous, honestly speaking. Wow. So I convinced they're just having their own rebellion against, you know, against the viewers. I don't know because this is crazy. What but I'm, back to the game. What impressed me with the 49ers in this game was their three headed monster and running back. First of all, Moster, Breida, and Samuel were actually sensational to be here. They would run the football on them a lot, especially Moster, who had that amazing play, I think, in the second quarter, third quarter. He ran for that 40 yard touchdown run, which literally just broke a tackle and just ran all the way over there. It was great, really, really good. But um, I'm impressed with them. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, who we kind of like, like uh, we're not too sure, huh. but he he showed us. He he put on that helmet that day and went crazy. That was very impressive. Very impressive game. 
Um, Drew Brees, like I said, this, like I said, people say that, oh, you know, this is the game they should have had. But they were up by like 10, 14 points at one point. Yeah, they were kind of beating the crap out of they them. They were beating the crap quarter. out of them for a while. I'm like, all right, cool. It's probably going to be like that new that Saints-Rams game early last year but that shootout over there. But it was good. It was really good, you know. But at the end of the day, um, the 49ers bounced back from the loss against Baltimore to a big win today fall on Sunday. Just, just, it's just amazing. It is. I haven't been this amazed by a team in a while. Like, I just, I'm just in awe. Yeah, for real. Wow. But out of that, those are the games from week number 14. Yeah, that might be the NFC Championship game. This might. This might. That's, that's crazy. But see, like I said, we can't really count Seattle out. But Heck no. Can't. Heck no, 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 no. No. But this, they're, they're very top heavy. Well, for me, the top three teams in the NFC who have a legitimate shot... I can't even say Green Bay. I'm gonna say San nope. Fran, Big San spot. Fran, New Orleans, and Seattle. Any of those three teams are going to win the, N- the NFC. Green Bay, soft, and obviously you hate Aaron Rodgers, so oh yeah, so fuck him. But that has nothing to do with me we seeing they soft. They, they're just soft. That's how they are. But they're not nah. Like I think they'll beat Minnesota in the playoff game. Even though I really will pray for Minnesota to win because it'd be hilarious to me. But I pick Minnesota to, um, to uh, Green Bay to beat them. But Minnesota at times looks tougher than they do. Like it's, they look soft. That's all I gotta say. It's not just because that 49ers is beating. I would say that oh, playing in Green Bay in January is pretty tough. But then again, how many times they lost over there? It, 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 I can't even say it's home field advantage to them because it's like yo, the Giants beat y'all there. Uh, uh, Dallas should have beaten y'all over there, but that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, the 49ers you know. beat you over there too. Yeah, Atlanta beat y'all over there. So like, yeah, no. Nah. Anyway, so that's what nah, the game fam. Is. But but Tennessee, like, where the hell did this come from? Mike Vrabel deserves a lot of credit for taking a chance and pulling the fran- quote unquote franchise QB of Marcus Mariota, which you say you never liked. You say you never liked. You say he's a bum. He is a bum, and you're seeing him right now. And Ryan Tannehill, who many said in Miami he was trash. Always getting injured, and I'll be, I'll, I'll admit, but he was. He was. That's all a fact. Yeah, it's very true, but I will admit, and I will have to admit, when they brought in Ryan Tannehill, they were saying, "Oh, the co- the quarterback controversy, blah blah blah," and I said, "Shut up! There's no way Ryan Tannehill will pose a threat to Marcus Mariota," and clearly, I was wrong, and with him in the starting hell, they are six and one. And his is a starter. Season one. This is proves to you how important the backup quarterback is in the NFL. Just quarterback in general. Yeah, general. Look, the Saints are five and zero with Teddy Bridgewater. They haven't missed a beat. You know what I'm saying? So, I originally picked the Titans to win the division. Then they started to suck a little bit. Like, oh, the Colts may take it, or Houston oh. may take it, and they're back into it now. Ryan Tannehill bought. Put a lot of pizzazz into the, into this team. Yeah, they're playing a lot tougher now. Lot they're tougher playing a lot more, you know, swag. They really are. So Mike Vrabel does a lot of credit for it. And I think I think the Titans are gonna be really good going forward. I like Vrabel as a coach. Me too. I've always knew it was gonna work out. It, it was gonna work I out. I said once they get rid of that bum ass quarterback, they're gonna be good. And look, that was quick. And also when they won to, they they run the ball very well too. They they tell Ryan Tannehill, don't fuck it up. Just do basically do. don't fuck it up, and and when he has to throw, he throws it. It's really good. It's not bad. That's a great formula. They'll be all right. I would like to see them in the postseason though. And I, if they play a Houston in the playoff season, I'm picking Tennessee. I agree. I think I don't, I, I don't like Houston. Because remember, they have to play Houston twice in the next three weeks, and they're both fighting for that that three four seed. It's a good chance that if Tennessee gets in and Houston gets in, they got to play each other three times in four weeks. And trust me, the Titans are hot, and they're, I think they're just better. And they're Screw just hot. And they're just like sneakily good. Now, I mean, they're good, but if you come to the postseason, be, beware. Even though, like I said, they may not go far, but they'll give a team some some issues. Like, you know, if they were to play the Chiefs in the, in the, in the wild card round, I'd be like, uh. Remember two years ago? Yeah, they beat <laughs> you before, but I don't know. But we'll see. But other than that year, I agree. So I'm I'm looking like I'm right, and I deserve credit for picking him. And people we went back was, on them topic. Huh? Yeah. We went back on them topic. Yeah. You get no credit. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I left them, and now I'm going back to say you're going to win the division. So, therefore, tighten up. I'm dead. All right. So, I promised, even though I almost forgot, I admit, I promise every episode we're going to have a top 10 of the decade little, I get series, going to call it. Mm-hmm. So, the first one for this week, for this month, is going to be the top 10 players, NFL players of the decade. Like I said, all the NBA ones, we're going to have literally an entire roundtable episode based on this and Christmas games late in the month. So, wait for that. So, whenever we do this, it's going to be basically NFL. Or we'll do a whole sports thing. It depends what I feel like doing. But anyway, top 10 players, NFL players. This was so decade. hard to do. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't know who to put in, put it out. Yeah, at first to me, it was light. I, I, I put, like, eight people quick. Then I started to think. I'm like, wait, but this guy did this and this guy did this. I'm like, oh, no. It's not easy. Oh, crap. So, it was to the point where I literally have a 10-man honorable mention. I have six people honorable mention. Six people honorable mention. So, you can do your four, and then we can do the six six from no, there. No, we're going to go through one and then one. I got you. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. I'm going I'm to go I'm gonna do my entire list first, and then your entire list. Okay, right, 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 right. go ahead. All right. And no commenting in between. Gotcha. All right. So, my honorable mentions is Earl Thomas. He's arguably the best safety in this decade. Arguably. Yes. Between him and Devin McCourty. Especially this year. This is probably McCourty's best year of his career, actually. Because he's this in, I think, 2012. Very good. Underrated safety for some reason. I don't get it. But very underrated safety. And I'm talking about Devin McCourty. Uh, Justin Tucker is probably the best kicker ever. And I compared stats with Vinatieri. He's made 50 more field goals, and he's a 90% field goal kicker. And he's only missed two extra points in his career, and it was one this year, one last year. Mm-hmm. He has four all pros. Four. This is stupid how good he is. He's probably the GOAT. And it's a little boring. All right, uh, Bobby Wagner. He's a little bit of a late bloomer. That's why he's here in the honorable mentions. There's one guy who was good since he got drafted, so, I mean, I have to put him in the list. But uh, Bobby Wagner is probably arguably the best coverage linebacker and the best middle linebacker in the game right now, arguably. LaShawn McCoy, people forgot about him, but he was actually Barry Sanders incarnate when he was in Philadelphia and for about half of his Buffalo tender before he like, really fell off in 2017. But when uh, Philly, he, you, you couldn't stop him. That wasn't possible. He was running my bio like Lamar Jackson was doing. That was he was doing in Philly, basically. Adrian Peterson. Um, yeah, he won an MVP. He was the last running back to win MVP. And he might be the only running back to win MVP probably ever again, depending how things go. Since that's like damn near an exclusive quarterback award now. So, yeah, he put that Vikings team on his back 2012 and made the playoffs. And the only reason why he lost, you can say, is because Christian Ponder was in the hospital. Their, their quarterback, well, I think, was what Joe Webb, some bum who played wide receiver after that. Yeah, yeah that was their quarterback. Yeah, Joe Webb, yeah. So, yeah, that's why they lost against Green Bay, who they beat not so long ago. So, yeah. But that pretty decent, albeit fake, Minnesota Vikings team. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip these two real quick because people are going to be like, what the fuck? All right, uh, A.J. Green. It's probably the third best wide receiver from this decade. It's two who, yeah. But AJ Green was actually a beast. Now, I didn't like him for a little while for some stupid reason. But then I really won't know to him, I think, 2015. But he's really good. But he, now he's starting to hit the injury bug the last few years. So it's kind of messing him up a little bit. But he's he's too much. And Patrick Peterson is actually probably the second best cornerback in this decade. I had to think hard between him and I think Akeem Talib. I was thinking about both of them. But I think I prefer Patrick Peterson. You know, Akeem has a ring, but he played with that ridiculous never defense. So, but it was tough between the two. But I think... I've seen it key to get his ass kicked a little bit too much over the years versus with Patrick Peterson just happening now. <laughs> so, yeah, but I went for them. And Patrick Peterson also more versatile, you know, return game and all that, and play wide receiver. All right, so my last two honorable mentions. Remember, I didn't all oh, the criteria of this top 10 list that you are only allowed two per position. Otherwise, half the list will be quarterbacks. So that, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this now. Russell Wilson is honorable mention. He started 2012, won the Super Bowl with second year, of pro- the reason why he lost him the year after that. Uh, and he should be the MVP now, but he probably won't be. Russell Wilson doesn't know what losing means. 
He's he's probably he's and he's starting his career how he started is winning more than Tom Brady did when he started, which says something. Even though Tom Brady had three Super Bowl rings at, at this point, but that's neither here nor there. And Drew Brees is actually not what mentions. The reason why is because you don't win enough. That's why. You you buying almost by and far have better numbers than anybody else. Like your your numbers nobody compares to that. Mind you, Peyton Manning broke records in 2013, and his numbers still don't compare to Drew Brees this, this decade. I'm talking about between 2010 and 2015, obviously, because he didn't play the last four years. But, yeah, Drew Brees is on just because you're finally winning now. It took you the entire decade to do this. Like, yeah, you, even though, like, you shouldn't fault a quarterback for stuff like that, we do, and that's how it is. So we have to get on you. Now, my top ten. This is no order, by the way, because it's too hard, and I didn't have time to do it. So I'm just going to start naming names. Tom Brady, dog, duh. That's my only number one because it's obvious. Three Super Bowl rings. He wins more than everybody else. His numbers are comparable with Drew Brees, even though Drew Brees has a little bit more yards. Uh, yeah, and broke like a billion records. Like, he has like three volumes of records that he broke. Like, stop it. It's Tom Brady's not even close. Then it's Aaron Rodgers. That's second quarter. Right? It, I, now you cannot tell me that I'm so biased that I do not recognize how great Aaron Rodgers is. I hate this son bitch. But he is the second best quarterback in this decade, and it, that's almost not close either. He cut, and the biggest reason is that Super Bowl, even though albeit it was the first year of this decade, and it's rusting. But yeah, and he doesn't know what interceptions mean, and he also has two MVPs, as does Tom Brady. I forgot about that. That also why that hurts Drew Brees doesn't have any MVPs. Not his fault, but it is what it is. All right, Aaron Donald. Um. Yeah, he's probably the most unstoppable force on defense, even though I also destroy him because he is very overrated. But he is the most unstoppable force since J.J. Watt. Who's next? J.J. Watt is also in this list. I think Aaron Donald has two defensive players of the years, not three. J.J. Watt has three. Two. Are you sure, J.J. Watt? I'm pretty sure J.J. Watt has three. The, 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 the J.J. Watt has three. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Aaron Donald has two. That's what I'm saying. J.J. Watt has three of them. And they both have 20 sack seasons. Yeah. Also, J.J. Watt could have won MVP in 2014, but defensive players don't win that award. So, And then for my final pass rusher, Von Miller. People forgot about Von Miller. But he is a Super Bowl MVP for a reason. He was the leader and I think the best player in that Denver Broncos uh, no-fly zone defense 2015. Yeah, he was ridiculous. And you could arguably say that he was the only reason why they couldn't do anything that Super Bowl uh, Panthers. He was a one-man wrecking crew. Mind you, the defense played great overall, but just he bounced out the screen the second the Super Bowl started, and it didn't stop until the Super Bowl ended. Uh, Luke Keekley, one defensive player of the year. He is the best middle linebacker in this decade. Come on, dude. Luke Keekley is crazy. This one play I had to say that would define him was when they played, I believe, Dallas. I don't remember what year it was. In 16, I think it was. When Donny Romo had the audacity, that can't be 16 because Dak Prescott played every game. I don't remember what year it was. Maybe it was 14. I don't know. But I think it was Thanksgiving. He threw a pass, and then Luke Keeley looked like Odell Beckham and just one-handed the mother trucker. And I'm like, dude, like, if, if a linebacker is doing that, then what, what? So, yeah, that one play alone, I'll never forget it. And that was made me fall in love with him. This is a little off the box, but Joe Thomas. People forgot about Joe Thomas. That is probably the best offensive lineman I've ever seen in since my entire life. Well, he was the only good thing about Cleveland regardless. Yeah, like, since 2007. For real. He never missed a snap until he got hurt in 2017, and no one could beat him. Don't know how he does it, but he did it. And for some reason, he stood in Cleveland. Patience sometimes wins me over, and he had patience with that disgusting franchise. I remember Joe. I remember in 2012. I think it was 2012 when I think it was 2012 when the Patriots went to Cleveland, and Peyton Hillis absolutely ran. Oh, uh, 2010. Oh, 2010. Yeah, 2010. When Peyton Hillis absolutely ran wild on the New England Patriots. In that yeah, he game. totally Hulk Hogan does. Yeah, he, he did. did. Yo, Joe, Joe Thomas. <laughs> Joe Thomas. Listen, pancake, pancake. I'm like, yo, he was destroying. And, and remember, remember, that Patriot defense was bad, was terrible. But, but they didn't look like real men in that game for a reason. They did not because <laughs> Joe Thomas was really bitching them. It was great. Peyton Hillis, who probably thought, oh, damn, I'm not leave. Damn, but he that was his breakout hey, year. Hey, breakout. 
They ain't break out nothing. It's one hit wonder, which might be a topic. Yeah, oh, yeah. I like that. That's I like funny. That. I like that. All right, two more. Well, kind of. Rob Gronkowski. I actually forgot about him. I had Justin Tucker in top 10. I stopped like, wait. Oh, Rob. Damn. Yeah, I have to put Rob. This, Sorry. This was, I'm telling you, this was so hard. Like, now I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, yo. I, well, I'll get to mine in a second, but I think, Rob yeah. Gronkowski. Like, yeah, that's arguably the best tight end ever. He is the most unstoppable force on offense we've ever seen. Because when he was healthy, no one can bring him down and no one can do anything to him. He was, it, it, he was just a nightmare. I believe he had the most tight end touchdowns in the season with 17, which is mm-hmm. stupid for a wide receiver, let alone a tight end. That was back in 2011. Back when he was 100% healthy, he started dying out. And my last, um, I couldn't choose between two of them because their stats and stuff are literally the same. But I prefer one over the other. And the two guys I'm talking about is Julio Jones and Antonio Brown. Mm-hmm. Their stats are literally the same. They both have... 11,000 yards. They both have the same amount of touchdowns. One has more receptions than the other in Antonio Brown, but um, his uh, Julio Jones over top stats, meaning like going deep, are unrivaled. So those are the little differences there. The difference there is, first of all, um, Julio Jones has a little bit more yards because Antonio Brown didn't play this year. He played the one game. Otherwise, Antonio Brown probably have more yards and more touchdowns. Because Julio Jones will get touched off for some reason. Because, you know, Matt Ryan sucks. Um, <laughs> it's true. He, and then I don't know how you don't throw him touchdowns. Like, dog, he's 6'3", like 220, and will jump over everybody. Like, it's retarded. But anyway. At least he should trade his ass. Yeah, right? Um, but the difference why I will pick at Tony Brown, that's because I like him more anyway. He has more all pros and more pro bowls than, than Julio Jones. Actually. Believe it or not. So that's why I wanted to put Antonio Brown, but there's no way in hell I'm having a top 10 list and not putting Julio Jones either. Like, that's, that's, that's not possible. That can't happen. So I that's one, a, that's one A and one B. So I put them both in the top 10. I cheated. I'm sorry. I have a 10 and a half instead of 10. <laughs> I couldn't choose between the two. Like, I prefer Antonio Brown, but Antonio Jones, is his stats are the same. So I couldn't leave both of them off. It's not possible. And then I can't leave other guys out either. I got to give respect to defense. Did I say Richard Sherman? No, you did not. Oh, well, that's my 10th guy. Richard Sherman. That was the best corner in the league for the last, like, God knows how many years. Yeah. So, yeah, come on now. Like, Stefan just took over, and then Jalen took over, like, two years ago. No. No, Stefan was the best corner for the last two years. Yeah, 2017. Jalen yeah, Ramsey, I'm saying. Jalen Ramsey, 2017, was the best corner. But since, like, 20, you could say 12 to 2016, the best was Sherman. And that wasn't arguable to me, at least. You, you threw at him, you were screwed. Ask Aaron Rodgers. So, yeah. There's a reason why him and Brady even. Brady didn't even throw at the guy in the Super Bowl for a reason. What They threw out LaFell over there on purpose to be decoy while they threw everybody else for a reason. Richard Sherman was that dude for a very long time. So well, there's my top ten and a half. Well, well, my ten people are pretty much give or take the same shit as yours because I'm like, damn. Literally everything, every time you go, I'm like, damn, man, I had that shit too. That shit too. <laughs> but I don't know, mention is a little bit, a little bit different though. Um, I have six honorable mentions actually. Um, AJ Peterson, AP, Mr. Peterson, sir, who was who won the MVP, who like he's mentioned before, carried that team. It was like damn, two two thousand ninety six yards, just a couple of yards away from breaking, from breaking this, breaking the record. Um, that was great. That was great to watch, and you know, God bless him. Uh, Drew Brees was also an honorable mention as well, like Juan said before. So many 5,000 yard seasons, um, breaking the record for passing yards in a season, all that was stuff. But this unluckily, you know, can't get it in the playoffs, unfortunately. Um, Justin Tucker, Club Mr. Automatic, you know, man, he's just too good. Arguably the GOAT, man. Arguably the GOAT right now. He has the highest uh, field goal percentage in NFL history at the 90. moment 90%. 90%. Yeah, 90.3%. Which is really good. Um, Le'Veon Bell was an honorable mention. Hmm. Like, um, like I said, in his five years in Pittsburgh, this man was an absolute machine. You could, there was no, it was so, it was so much easy to get him in the offense. At one point, I think it was 2015. Or 2015, we had over 400 touches. He had 300, 300 carries, about 100, and almost 325 carries, for like 80 receptions in that year. It was just a complete machine, you know. I, I think it was great. Uh, 
you're not gonna look at um Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. That was the fifth quarterback I was talking about earlier. Peyton Manning, um, obviously broke the record for um passing touchdowns in a season in twenty thirteen when they he absolutely went crazy. He absolutely went ballistic in his first year in Denver after they told him, Listen, you're done in, in Indianapolis. You know, Indianapolis did make the right choice in choosing Andrew Luck. But Peyton Manning said, screw ya, I still got a lot on the tank, and this surgery saved my life. And my last honorable mention, it may be a little bit of a shocker, and he was still, he was good, really, really good for the beginning part of the decade until he got hurt, and that's Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis got hurt, I think, in 2012. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in 2012. Can I change it? I mean, listen, I'm, 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 I'm not finished yet, buddy. <laughs> Cause that 2010 season was ridiculous. Yes, that he was he, he was a big part of that tw- that um, Jets 2010 season. That's a better. That's probably the better season than Sherman or Patrick might have ever had. He was it was literally no flight zone, no flight zone going in this area. Revis, they called yeah, him Revis yeah. Island. Those for three reason. nine, ten, and eleven. He no one could touch the guy. Yeah, no Durrell, one. Darrell Revis. I I, I, want, I I originally had Darrell Revis in the top ten, but the Richard Sherman had. He did it a little longer. A little bit longer past the like five and years. And the Super Bowl. Yes. Because of him, though. Yeah, because of him. Yeah, but yeah, Darrell Reeves was really good. So that's my honorable mentions. Um, yeah, I'm changing my Patrick P. Get out of here. Yeah, Darrell Reeves. <laughs> Definitely Darrell Reeves. See how hard does you forget people? It's hard. Patrick Peterson to me was like, okay, but he, to me he's overrated anyway. But I had to pick Darrell Reeves. Darrell Reeves was. No, no you're, flight, you're right. 100% no correct. Flight zone. All right, so my top 10 in no particular order. Um, number one, obviously, Tom Brady, three Super Bowls in the decade. Been there five times. No, um, I think six times been there. No, no, um, three losses. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's two losses. 11 and um, 17. Oh, yeah. I, I can't keep forgetting about that. But the other one, yeah. So two losses, three wins, five Super Bowl appearances in the decade. Literally half uh, half of the Super Bowls in the decade was literally Tom Brady. Yes. Literally. That's, that's, that's New England. Yeah. That's kind of dumb. He won two MVPs in that span, including the one in 2017, which they said that it should have been Carson Wentz even after he got hurt. Even though in 2016, when he came back after that four-game suspension, playing out of his damn mind, but they said, oh, we can't give it to him because, you know, he, he was out four games. four games. But yet they're crying about Carson Wentz the year after. Yeah, you're right. It didn't make no sense to me. Like, whatever, but... And they tried their hardest to get um, Todd Gurley the award, even though Honey's good for a month. Yeah. But whatever. But he also has a unanimous, the only unanimous, unanimous MVP in 2010. In 2010, the only one. Didn't say which, that earlier. I'm sucks because that, that 2010 team was, as far as, like, offensively, how he's able to do with those type of players. That's the crazy thing is, they said, oh, well... Uh, Tom Brady has trouble with the receivers now. You know, can't do anything. But 2010, who do you have 2010? Who do you have 2010? Uh, what, Wes uh, uh, Welker, uh, uh, Gronkowski, Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah, killed. And Deion Branch. So there was literally nobody who can go up, take the top off. Nah. But at least he had the tight ends, though. But the defense, actually, in 2010, actually, in 2010, um, they kind of started that two tight end set then. Yeah, that's when it started. That's when it started, and then everyone started to copy them because literally, like, you couldn't double team. Rock Gronkowski because he was too good, and then Aaron Hernandez who is just way as athletic, athletic so. as hell, and they, it, was, it was there was no way you could, there was no way you can stop them, and everything. And he had Stephen Ridley was there. I think Stephen Ridley was no, not Stephen Ridley. Um, ben Jarvis Green Ellis was over I there. I hated him Piece so much. That, so go, yeah. Anyway, um, Aaron her, um Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> number two. He won two MVPs in that span. You know, including a fifteen and one. Season 2011, but, you know, whatever. But he has a championship. Uh, J.J. Watt, when healthy, is ferociously great. He almost broke the record. Um, almost broke um straight hand record, record yeah. of sacks in a season. He was close. Like, I think he's two sacks sh- short of it. Um, number four, Joe Thomas. Like I said, probably one of the best offensive linemen in the league in that span because literally he was you couldn't get past him. He ain't probably to me. He is. No, no, he's I, probably the best ever. I mean, you mean like he yeah, is man. the best lineman in this span in this generation. When you're able to make Peyton Hillis a one hit wonder to, you know, really, really like look great and he became he became a Madden cover athlete. So like that's how you know. Oh that's what Aiden is defeat, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Joe Thomas. Um uh, Von Miller absolutely incredible you know first of all just he be in them old spice commercials though but he deserves all of them he 
he's just so ferocious. Like he's able to this, this to disrupt any offense he goes against. It's just amazing how he can do it. Uh, Antonio Brown, when he's not crazy, he's actually one of the best receivers in the league. Six straight seasons with 100 receptions and this absolutely this absolutely this uh, defense is not, defense is nightmares. It's ridiculous how great he was. Um, it was a wow. He had 136 receptions in the season. It's incredible. But it's just dumb. Like I just don't understand how you can do have production like that. To have that type of offensive weapons with him and Le'Veon on the same field like that and not win is ridiculous to me. It is crazy to me. Um, another one is Julio Jones. I wanted to say about Julio Jones. Um, it's just amazing. I think he's had similar numbers like similar numbers like Antonio Brown. Was, no, it's just the same. But, I'm telling you, know, you. it's just crazy. Because I couldn't choose. It was like one of the two. Uh, Rob Rob Rakowski, man, I've said before when he's healthy as well, completely game changer, mismatch. It was like Tom Brady safety valve. Like yep. listen, in the, especially totally in the re- right especially now. in the red zone because in the red zone you could forget about it. It was damn near automatic with him in, in the red zone. God, I miss him. I miss him so much. Uh, Luke Kuechly, probably the best linebackers in the league right now. Um, like I said, and he will change the game as well. And number 10, finally, Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman, there was a reason why in the early 2010s, no one wanted to throw it, throw it to him. Like, if Revis didn't get hurt, didn't get hurt, I would put Revis number 10, but I just couldn't. Because his him getting hurt in Tampa Bay got hurt. It's like, damn, sucks. But I'm going with Richard Sherman for number 10. And that's my top 10. All right. There's our top 10. The first one of the month. Awesome. But this is done. We bid you adieu. Yes. Like, share, subscribe. We are on Inst- no, Instagram. We are on um, YouTube. We are on Spotify. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on iTunes. Um, Google Play Radio. And any other platform that I forgot, you can figure it out. Well, why don't we have an Instagram? We that, probably make that. We should make one too. I'm not gonna lie to you. We should. Yeah, we slacking. But other than that, we bid you adieu. Um, we'll see you later. Peace. Peace out. We love you.